Hi. I've had another think about my car with the P0010 fault code. I haven't managed to get near it until now. The first thing I was thinking is what what would cause it. So I, I've already done a video on this and ruled out certain things up to the variable valve timing solenoid. I proved that was working. It was getting a command. Okay, looking at this, this was a snapshot on the Fox wheel. I'm seeing things that I couldn't see on the snap on. I've got camshaft shifter, measured position. I got the intake camshaft shifter reference position, so I'm guessing it wants it to be 43 degrees. No, it's like crank, but it says camshaft, so I don't know what that, the relation with crank there. Anyway, 43.9 degrees, and it's showing 2.6 degrees as the measured position. Okay, so intake camshaft shifter reference position, camshaft sh shifter measured position. So I guess that reference must be what it should be. And the 2.6 is actually what it is, so it's not moving enough. And if we look here, Intake camshaft defacer control. That's at a hundred percent at this time that I was driving there. And it's obviously had to open the duty cycle more and more. It's working more hundred percent and it still can't match what it wants. Oddly enough, it's not flagged up a fault code yet. Let's see if I move that out of the way you can see the intake. Camshaft shifter reference position. And look at that and compare it to the measured position. What I can do now is bring them up on a graph. Right? On this little fox wheel. Well, I could do, but it's not doing it. It's not actually sure. Ah, oh, that's because i got to hit continue. Right, yeah, I switched it off. It froze it because it was going to start. Now I can match the two together, match them so one's on top of the other. And I'll go for a little drive and I'll freeze it and take a little picture of that one. But it definitely looks like it's not doing what it wants, what it should be doing. So I do seem to have an issue with this. I can get these, these are the parameters I was wanting to find on the snap-on scan tool and it, they weren't on the list, so it must be the scan tool and not the car. And then you don't get one scan tool that's good on all cars, that's impossible, so that's why I keep this one as well. Okay, back at the car after going for a short drive and I had it on graph, seeing what's going on. The scales almost follow each other, kind of, not exact. But then if we look at the side, the auto ranging, the yellow one is maximum of 3.0 degrees. Whereas the blue one is 40.9, and the blue one's what it wants it to be. And the measured one is what it actually is. So it's kind of doing what it should do, but not to the um, extent that it should be doing it. So it could be just that it's oil starvation or blockage of oil, or oil pressure might be worth checking. The other one is, uh, that I'm thinking is if the uh, pulleys incorrectly fitted because these pulleys don't have a keyway at all they're just tightened up with a bolt and it's the bolt that holds them you can put them on any way you want so if that's the case and bearing in mind that it had a snap timing belt when I bought this car and I've replaced uh, the valves and put a new belt on it well my thought now is what if the uh, phaser pulleys rotated a bit at the time when the timing belt broke due to the valves hitting the pistons uh, with there being no keyway it's possible that that's happened or it could just be that it was the pulley's knackered anyway so I'm looking at this and it's trying to do what it's been told but doing hardly the amount which also explains why I couldn't really hear anything when I was trying to manually power it up because uh, I still was convinced that I should have heard a change to the engine sound so, uh, yeah, I'll check that out.
There's a few things I was thinking of checking. One was oil pressure, but I've gone off that idea because the oil pressure, I can check that at the oil pressure switch and put, um, I've got a kit somewhere here. See, I got my sort of shells there with my stuff that I use when I'm doing these jobs. I've got an oil pressure sensor kit. Uh, it would go in where the oil pressure switch is and, uh, I'd use the oil pressure gauge to give me an idea. I could check the specification against what it should be and see if it's okay. But then I thought that's not really going to help because I already know that the the light on the dash isn't working. The engine seems okay. Uh, I could still check it, but I'm not going to know what the oil pressure is going to be at the variable valve timing solenoid or the variable valve timing pulley because it has a separate oil pump for that that's inside the head and it's driven from um, the camshaft. It kind of looks like a fuel pressure, uh, a fuel pump. I mean, when you see the fuel pumps driven off a camshaft, it's that same sort of idea, very high pressure. And it's not going to let me know if that side of the circuit, if that side of the oil pressure is OK or not by checking the oil pressure at the usual place that you check it. And I have no way of taking out the uh, variable valve timing solenoid. I've got no way of taking that out and plugging in my oil pressure gauge. It just, it's not going to work in there. So what I'm going to do for now is check the timing first. Because I keep going back to the idea that when I got this car, it had a broken timing belt. And I know that the pulley that's on the end of the camshafts, there's no woodruff key on either one. There's no keyway. So what I mean is the pulley can go in, in any position. Now, when I put the belt on and rebuilt the head, replaced the valves, I used the tool that lines up the camshafts, it locks into the slots on the camshafts. So I know the camshafts were in the correct place and I've got the the um, timing pin that screws in to the bottom of the engine, or the bottom of the block, and it goes up against the crank. It doesn't go into a hole in the crank, it doesn't go into a notch, so it's locked properly. It just goes in and you turn the crank until it goes against this um, timing pin that you put in so you just turn the camshaft and it would just butt up against the pin so it could still be off in one direction but it would lock up in the off direction um, but that's what I did I didn't take the pulleys off the camshafts and I was thinking everything's fine if I don't touch it it'll be spot on but there is some of these toolkits for the Renaults come with the part of the toolkit that's needed for the variable valve timing pulley. So I'm thinking, if it comes in a kit, it's obviously meant to be used. I didn't use it because I didn't undo the bolt. But because it's meant to be used, I'm thinking it can go in, in any direction. It can go in, in any way you want. There's no keyway. So the fact that there is a tool to locate it in the correct place tells me that it is supposed to go on in one way only so that was my next thing I, I thought I would check take the covers off put the tools in put put the pins in the engine I mean check the timing and see what happens the first problem I've got is the engine mount has a, a welded nut captive nut inside the wheel arch and that's just turning with the bolt so I can't unscrew it so what I need to do now is weld it up and then I'm going to run a tap and die over the threads of these engine mount bolts and spray them up in penetrating oil and hope that that helps it all come apart. This mic that I got from Draper is brilliant for doing these sort of hobby things. I've heard mixed reviews. Um, it was really cheap for the hobbyist. I think it's like a hundred amp or something. It's not, it's not excessively powerful. Yeah, a hundred amp. But it does the job whenever you need it for something like this. It's handy to have around. These are the engine mount bolts that I was talking about on the inside of the wheel arch. This one was just turning at the top, so I've welded it. 
and I'm going to cover them all in penetrating oil. So I put the camshaft locking tool in the back, holding the two cams. They line up in the back and down here to the bottom of the engine. I don't know if you can see it down there. There's a pin goes in there. Just screw it all the way in, comes in the kit, goes in the bottom of the engine block at the front of the car, at the gearbox side. And this phaser pulley on this side, it's only got a variable valve timing on the intake. It's not on both cams. That it won't line up to fit the tool in. Can't get it to line up with the bolts. So maybe if that's slightly out of alignment, it's trying to move something and it's already too far ahead of where it should be. That could be the fault with the positioning of the phaser pulley, so I'll take it all out and fix it. Sometimes you need the right tool for the right job, and this tool here, if I put it in here, is definitely one of those. You just can't do it without that tool. Regular sockets are too big to fit in the gap. Okay, gonna take the seal out here. I haven't got the leverage. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. There it is. There it is. I don't know if you can see it on this one, but the back one here definitely looks like that's been leaking as well. So the exhaust camshaft's leaking. That one, I'll just do all the seals. Gonna do the crank whilst I'm at it as well. So I know they're all done. I'll clean this up, put it together with a new belt. Okay, if you can't get a seal out like this one, because it was so far in, you can put a hole in it and put a self-tapper in. When the self-tapper's in, I've already pulled it out. You just get your pliers and the self-tapper and leave it on the end of the shaft or whatever you can and it comes right out. That way you don't mess up the shaft. The last thing you want to do is mess up a shaft on something that's going to rotate because there's no way you can seal it. At least if it's on the outer edge and you mess it up, it's not turning so you can fill it full of sealant, high temp sealant and give you a chance of sealing it. But once you've knackered the shaft, you can't do anything then, it's just going to leak. Right, so this time I know the timing's right. Last time it was incorrect, which is why I took all this apart in the first place because of the timing, the engine management light came on because of a timing issue with the phaser pulley, which is this bit. I checked everything out and knew that it was getting a control, so it only left me to check the timing is actually correct with this. So using the correct kit, I proved that it wasn't right and I've changed it, but I put a new belt on and took care of the oil seals that were leaking at the same time. If you are going to get a kit, make sure it includes the part for doing the phaser pulley. Okay, so this time I'm revving up the car and I am getting it to do different stuff. It's following what you would expect it to do. If I, if I just look at this, I was revving it up. I don't like to do it too much outside, um, outside the... Uh, you know, on the street, but roughly the, you see the two, if you look in this area here, that's the two numbers, what they were, and the graph also shows you, but because of the auto scaling, we need to look at that one, and they're kind of trying to follow each other. We'll keep going, you know, not exactly right, but they're roughly just after it's expecting it to do something that catches up to where it should be. So I'll go back the other way and show you. Okay, so it was looking for, well, it was 12. There's, the, there's what it was looking for. You see that they're just not quite at the same time, but before they weren't changing at all. Right? So really doing good now, we're getting this, it's working right, and when you rev it up and you look at the rev counter there, uh, the ABS light on, I must have knocked the wire, 
but when I rev it up, before it was a gentle rev, now when it gets to about 3000 RPM it just revs up like it's hitting a power band, like that. I'll show you back on this one here, right, I'll rev it, and they're both following each other nicely. They didn't get time to catch up when you're just revving it like this, but on the road it's better. Like there's a good one. You see it wasn't doing that before. So that little bit of timing being out of alignment is what was wrong with this. And I thought some of you might be wanting to know what the outcome of the car was. That's all it was, the timing.